Early on the morning of April 22, 1942, a consolidated B-24D Liberator heavy bomber lifted off from Kirtland Field in Albuquerque, New Mexico on a navigational round-trip training mission to Kansas City, Missouri. While the trip to Kansas City went without incident, the return trip ended when the aircraft crashed into Trail Peak here at Philmont Scout Ranch. Learn more about this piece of Philmont history on this edition of Artifact of the Week. The B-24D, serial number AAF-411133, was assigned to the Combat Crew Training School, also known as the Four Engine School, at Albuquerque's Kirtland Field. Kirtland's primary mission was to train bombardiers, as well as to tran transition transport air crews to the B-24 Liberator. The Four Engine School opened in the fall of 1941, but was moved to Smyrna, Tennessee in May of 1942. In early 1942, very few B-24s were involved in the Allied war effort. But by 1943, that would change, and the B-24 would go on to become the most produced heavy bomber of the war. This particular B-24 had been flown less than 120 hours, having been accepted from the manufacturer Consolidated Aircraft only six weeks before the crash. There were eight individuals on board the aircraft for the trip to Kansas City. Seven were crew members, and one was a passenger merely catching a ride to Kansas City. The crew members were Captain Robert Redding from Minotaur, Nebraska. Captain Redding was the aircraft commander, an instrument flight instructor, and the operations officer of the Combat Crew Training School. Second Lieutenant Rollin Jeffries from Kansas City, Missouri. He was a pilot. Second Lieutenant Charles Raynard from Hiram, Ohio. Raynard was also a pilot. Flight Engineer Corporal Philip McComber from North J, Maine, Radio Operator and Mechanic Corporal Dwayne Peterson from Worthington, Minnesota, and there were also two civilians on board the aircraft, George Van Hooser from Windsor, Missouri, a TWA Flight Engineer Instructor, and Jonas Ruff from San Jose, California, a TWA First Officer and Ground School Instructor. The passenger was Hal Blackburn. Blackburn was TWA station manager in Albuquerque and responsible for the four-engine school. He was headed to Kansas City to attend meetings in the Kansas City office and did not make the return trip to New Mexico. The flight from Kirtland to Kansas City was uneventful and the crew had the afternoon to enjoy Kansas City with Van Hooser, Redding, and Jeffries who enjoyed ties to the area. Around 4 p.m., Captain Redding checked into the operations center and received a weather briefing. The weather in Kansas City was nominal, with only a few scattered clouds and some industrial smoke and haze beginning to reduce visibility. There was an overcast ceiling of 6,000 feet in the Albuquerque area with excellent visibility. Thunderstorms were reported around the Tucumcari area, and surface winds were southerly at 15 to 20 miles an hour over the entire route of flight. In the Las Vegas, New Mexico area, the weather was deteriorating with poor visibility rain showers and clouds down to 800 feet. Weather and visibility over the rest of the route was very good, particularly in western Kansas and southeastern Colorado. At 5.02 p.m. Central Time, the Liberator lifted off for the flight back to Albuquerque. At 5.47 p.m., they radioed their position as 25 miles northwest of Newton, Kansas. At 7.37 p.m., their position was reported as 25 miles east of Las Vegas, and Redding requested an instrument clearance as the ceiling had dropped to 300 feet due to rain. 18 minutes later, at 7.53 p.m., a garbled radio report was received where their position was interpreted to be 75 miles northwest or northeast of Las Vegas. The crew also reported being on instruments and climbing to 14,000 feet. 12 minutes later, at 8.05 p.m., they checked in again but did not report any issues. At 8.45 p.m., 45 minutes after they were due back at Kirkland, the flight was declared overdue. At midnight, when the plane would have run out of fuel, the flight status was changed to missing. A search was organized and nine days later on May 1st, H.M. Kinchlow, flying another B-24, found the crash site on Trail Peak at Philmont Scout Ranch. On Saturday, May 2nd, a search party, including military authorities, police, and other civilians, including Hal Blackburn, arrived at the crash site. Leading the party was Chope Phillips, son of Philmont donors Waite and Genevieve Phillips. Now in 1942, there were no trails to the summit of Trail Peak, and Trail Peak's name originated 
From its being the dominant peak along the trail from Crater Lake to Rayado Lodge at Fish Camp via Fowler Pass and then Webster Pass. The search party reached the crash site via horseback from the ranch headquarters through very deep snow. They found no survivors. A watch discovered near the crash site sewed 8.29 p.m., the most accepted time for the crash to have occurred. In the aviation community, they refer to crashes and other incidents involving aircraft as mishaps, with the goal of any investigation being to prevent the incident from occurring again. While in the case of Liberator 41-1133, the exact cause of the mishap will never be known. There are many theories on what may have happened, and physical and technical evidence at the crash site point to the likelihood of a very forceful downdraft and wind shear contributing to this crash. Now, if you find yourself in Trail Peak during a Philmont trek, you will still find evidence of the crash on the side of the mountain, with propellers, parts of the fuselage, and the wings still holding vigil over the site. Recently, the National Scouting Museum designed and the Philmont Conservation Department installed new interpretive panels at the site of the crash on Trail Peak. The installation also required some stonework to be completed in the area. These improved signs help to better tell the story of Flight 41-1133 and to remember 2nd Lieutenant Roland Jeffries, an Eagle Scout and member of the tribe of Mikase, an honor camper society founded in Kansas City by H. Rowe Bartle, the tribe of Mikase first erected a memorial to Jeffries and the crew of the B-24 in 1947, and many members of the tribe of Mikase have visited the location over the years to show their respect to Jeffries and his fellow crewmates. As a side note, in the main gallery of the National Scouting Museum, we have the box for a World War II official Air Scout spotter model of the consolidated B-24D Liberator. Now this model was part of a set of spotter models created by the Strombeck Becker Manufacturing Company of Moline, Illinois during World War II and privately labeled for the Boy Scouts of America. These models were built by high school students around the country for the government and were used to train military personnel as well as civilian civil defense volunteers in aircraft identification. Well, that's all the time we have for this week. Join us next time as we continue to learn more about the history of the Boy Scouts of America through the collections of the National Scouting Museum and Artifact of the Week. <laughs>